So this is the behind the scenes video for Blossom and the Decrepit Man, a short film that I had the opportunity to shoot this past summer that just came out this last week. So before you watch this video, click the link down in the description and check it out. So Tim and I wanted to make a simple project just like we did when we were kids, um, basically making movies with our friends in the backyard. And so we wanted to do a project that we could shoot in a single day with minimal crew and budget. Um, and so Blossom and the Decrepit Man was born. The other key to this was we wanted something we could put out online right away rather than having something go through the festival circuit. The interesting thing with that is film festivals, it's often about two years from the time you shoot the film until it's gone through the festival circuit um, and is ready to be released online. So your portfolio is always two years old. Um, and especially when you're starting out, two years is a long time to make progress and just become a better filmmaker. Um, and so, yeah, we just wanted something that represented our level of work currently. Um, and that's how we got started. So the concept for this film was pretty simple. We just wanted to have a ticking timer and then something happened when it got to zero um, and just wanted to see how our character would react. We had our good friend Rihanna um, act in this film and we knew she would be perfect for the role. So after we had our concept and we set our date, the next thing we did was a location scout. We're out here location scouting for a new short, trying to find a good spot in the woods to be able to shoot it because you'd think all woods looks the same, but they really don't. They don't look the same at all, especially when you need one tree to be here and the other tree to be exactly here and there can't be trees in between the trees. That's a huge pain. That's a problem. We walked around for about an hour talking about shooting logistics and tree shopping. We looked at a lot of trees. So this tree could probably work. What about that tree? That one? Long Distance long. is good. Okay, is there another tree that's equidistant that actually is a little opening around to film in? Then we shot some test footage and swatted about 5,000 mosquitoes before calling it a night. Once we were done with our location scout, the next step was doing a shot list. Tim and I did a super basic shot list, much more simplistic than we usually do. The final step of pre-production was prop fabrication. So we had, we knew we had our hero prop for this one, which was the faux bomb with the uh, timer attached to it that'd be counting down to zero. So we ended up finding a Kodak photography timer on eBay, and then we had a friend of ours attach it to a contraption that he made that looked like maybe it would blow up when things counted down to zero. So the idea for this one was to shoot in all natural light, um, just using negative fill and a little bit of bounce when we needed to. The 60s were a perfect time to be, you know. That's just, that's the times. <laughs> Dirt man. Dirt man. How does she look? Uh, she looks like she's look been very Or I see you solved my puzzle. <laughs> I see you solved my first puzzle. <laughs> oh yeah, let's do. I see you solved my first. Cut, cut off on first. Action. So I see you solved. Oh. Okay, full set down this one and action. So there was one shot in particular that kept me up at night for months thinking about it um, until I was able to get in and do some adjustment in the grade. It was this shot um, of her falling forward. Basically the Ursa just isn't good in low light. It was actually really dark and gloomy and it got super dark that one point in the afternoon. Um, 
And that happened to also be the time when she was falling to the ground, which is darker. And so Zach, our producer, ended up taking his Pixel 3 and shining the flashlight into the bounce and then that filled her face. It was still really dark and really noisy, like where there was lines and everything. So here's what the raw shot looks like. And then afterwards I was able to polish it up to something that's sort of passable, but um, I still feel pretty bad about that one. One of the bigger challenges of this project was how far we were away from power. Um, I think the closest outlet was about a quarter mile away back at the Boy Scout camp. And so we had to run back and forth throughout the day um, to keep batteries charged and just keep the production going. It also rained on and off all day. So we were constantly going in and out from under the tent. Sometimes we were wearing ponchos, sometimes we weren't. Um, so that was annoying. And then about 10 minutes after we wrapped, it just, the skies opened and it just torrentially downpoured. And so that was kind of fun. So this ended up being a bit more of a challenging edit than Tim was expecting um, because we only did a few weeks of pre-production instead of the usual number of months that we put into pre-production. Um, so things weren't planned as well and so post-production suffered because of it. Tim had to make more sacrifices um, and also just find more creative solutions. So one thing he ended up having to do quite a bit was speed up clips in certain spots to uh, help sell moments a little better. Okay, so here we are on the main timeline. So there's this moment here where she turns, where she turns her head, we whip and then come back. Um, and what we ended up having to do was uh, leave this clip regular speed. We had to jump up to like 120% here, land back at 100%, um, and then go back to 110% back, I think, and land back at 100%. So lots of little uh, micro adjustments like that um, throughout the process to just try to help sell it and get all the timing just how we wanted it. Another key element of post-production here was sending it off to some trusted people for notes. The key is not sending it to too many people because you'll have just as many opinions as people you send it to. So choose two or three people and send it to them. Don't pick more or else you're just gonna get confused. And we know that from experience because we've done it before. Another thing Tim did on this project was just let it sit. This is one of my favorite things to do. Well, it's actually one of my least favorite things to do because you think you have a perfect project and then you let it sit for a week or so and come back with fresh eyes and you realize uh, the problems that you have with it. So another cool element of this project is the custom soundtrack. So we sent this project off to a composer we've worked with before. She's awesome, her name's Janae. And after a month or two, she sent back the finished stems of this project. There were 53 different stems um, that I was able to bring into post audio, which I actually wanna talk about in a different video because there's a lot going on there. Um, and I think we're particularly proud of how the audio came out on this project. All right, so I quickly wanted to walk you guys through what we did for color on this project. Here's the kind of final result. I think it looks pretty decent. Um, it was not easy to get here though, especially um, because we didn't do too much pre-production. Tim and I hadn't talked about the look of the film um, beforehand, and we each had pretty different ideas of what we wanted it to look like. Um, and so we did a couple different color passes and nothing was clicking. One of us liked it, one of us didn't. Um, and so finally we hopped on Shot Deck and did some digging around and we found a still from a movie called Beast from 2017 um, that we really liked the palette of um, and we thought, hey, let's try to implement this. And so I did my best to use that as a base to implement a grade onto this um, and I think it worked out pretty well. For reference sake, here is what one of the previous versions of the grade looks like. It's just not good. Um, so it, it is good to take your time and actually get it right in post. I don't know if this is as right as it could be. I'm sure there's other things I could do. Um, and I'm also sure my method isn't uh, wasn't perfect on this one, but it is what it is. So I had two main takeaways from this project. Number one, always bring a light with me. Even if it's just a small battery powered light, it could save my butt in a lot of situations. 
Number two was spend more time in pre-production. Now, we knew that going in on this project, we intentionally weren't spending much time in pre-production, but I guess this went to just prove the point of how important pre-production was. It would have saved us a lot of time and hassle in the edit and in color, and I'm sure the whole project just would have come out a little more polished than it did. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, click the like button. And if you want to see more stuff, subscribing is pretty cool too. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.